It's about 4 o'clock. Uh, call to order the uh, December uh, 4th meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Um, we have um, an audio recording of this meeting uh, at this time. Um, as always, if there's anyone who would like to make a public comment to this official meeting about any item that's not on the agenda, please do so at this time. Uh, seeing no one, um, I will um, move to um, the, um, we're going to take things a little bit out of order here um, at the request of the uh, police department. Uh, we'd like to move straight to item 11, uh, the violation hearing um, uh, One Pearl Street Incorporated, DBA Teller and Riley's in the 11th. Um, and so for time purposes also, Commissioner Campadelli uh, has to leave at 4.30, so we're going to go out of order. Apologies to the rest of you who were earlier on the agenda, but um, uh, we need to do this. So I'd like to um, to reference the uh, request uh, from the um, from the police department uh, to hold this violation hearing. The um, uh, the matter in question is that we had to change the uh, uh, entertainment license for Tully O'Reilly's and the Elevens to uh, prohibit the use of DJs except upon special uh, application and permission uh, from the License Commission. And uh, in this case, the police department um, uh, alleges that the uh, establishment held a DJ event on October 20th. Uh, they had not come to the commission for special permission for this DJ event, and therefore the police department is saying they are violation of their entertainment license, and that we will be hearing that now. So with that, I would like to um, ask the, um, uh, the uh, chief to... Um, describe the uh, violation um, that he is uh, asking us to consider. Good afternoon. Uh, um, just to summarize, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with it, include several documents uh, with it, but uh, in terms of the uh, campus and whatnot. Uh, you recall the 4th of September, the License Commission had a ruling against uh, Tully Riley slash the uh, that included a seven-day suspension at the time. At the time, the commission uh, decided uh, to reduce it to a five-day suspension to serve and two uh, days suspended to be continued to September 2014. And one of those conditions was to eliminate uh, the disc jockey or DJ. Uh, I also understand that the subsequent places commission meeting, Kelly uh, slash the 11s came here and asked for a waiver, uh, specifically for the 11s, and that waiver was denied. <coughs> That's my recollection through press reports. I wasn't at that meeting. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, officers were conducting a, a license premise check on the 20th of October 2013 at 12 10 a.m. Officers Perry and LeBron are present uh, for the license commission request. <coughs> but first hand testimony from them, that's certainly a prerogative. But I'll just summarize. Uh, these officers, LeBron and Perry, to the premises, after hearing some music from the street, and they're aware the uh, live music only will be the evolution of the use of DJ. The officers are met by Mr. Sanon St. Ives of the 11s. Mr. Sanon provided the officers with a letter, and the copies included, which stated that the bar was hosting live improvisation music, music which included the use of turntables, laptops, and headphones. Upon checking the performance, the officers did not observe any singing or use of musical instruments. They did see the use of laptops records being put on turntables and playing and mixing of pre-recorded music together. The officers heard me all on stage and heard himself as a DJ. The officers also noted the sound level of the music was very loud and could be heard outside on the busy street. The officers also noticed numerous flyers, copy included, around the bar advertising performance at the 11th. The flyer mentioned that the performance introduced general DJing stateside. Also off the 11th, and 11 so officers inspected the bar log, which is required for establishments of the two-way closing. However, the officers found nothing entered on the log <coughs> that night. 
So it's clear from the observations of the officers that the venue of the Eleven was not a live music event. Rather, it was playing, mixing, and pre-recorded electronic music by the DJ. who expect to uh, uh, speak to this matter, including the officers and anyone from the licensee. Just, if you could rise, please. Uh, I just need to swear you have been hearing a chief you as well. Uh, uh, you affirm that what you are about to say is, is uh, what's the uh, word? True, and, true to the best of your knowledge. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, sorry, I had to do that. I forgot to do it. Um, so, Chief, would you like any of your officers to further elaborate on this? I, I think our summary is uh, perfectly fine. I'm okay. Sure. Our attorney for colleagues has any questions or wishes to question the officers, they'll certainly be available. But, uh, okay. All right. Then that, uh, that completes your statement. Um, uh, do you have any questions uh, for the Chief? Um, I only added one uh, thing that I mentioned last time. Uh, yesterday I spent four and a half hours scouring both uh, the court documents, uh, the court officer documents, going back over, you know, through all of our testimony and, and witnesses and things like that. At one point, <clears throat> I do remember, and I couldn't find it, and I don't know if it was that or, or if the gentleman that came in before, but I do remember um, they asked if they could, in the 11th side, use in, in conjunction with, um, there was one performer, I guess, that they, they came in and, and that they want to have back all the time. And they mentioned that they use a laptop and they use some of the mixing things along with some other type of entertainment. And I'm not sure if that's part of what that gentleman was, you know, um, or not. Because uh, I, I obviously wasn't there to see that, but. So, I guess uh, your statement is pretty clear in you know, what, you, what you wrote about, you know, just, I guess, if he, he certainly called himself a DJ or whatever he did, but I just wanted to see if you recall. Um, it was also around the time that I thought that we were talking about if they wanted to pull a DJ, that they would come up and, and go for an extra permit or a separate permit on something like that. And yeah. we said, okay, you know, we'll certainly apply. So... Um, you know, so I just wanted to put that part out and just kind of jog everyone's memory that you know, someone that did stand at this podium and state that they were going to be uh, having that kind of performance, you know, but 
not certainly somebody that was just a DJ. So it was supposed to be in conjunction with, you know, some, I don't know what they, I, I don't exactly remember. That's why I spent four and a half hours trying to figure it out, and uh, I couldn't find it. So, but I don't know if you guys, you know, if anyone else remembers that person standing up, you know, and, and going over that. And I don't think, I think it was the gentleman that works for uh, Tilly that asked that question. He came in for clarification. Right. We had a meeting, um, a violation hearing at which we took the chief's recommendation. The chief at the time also recommended that perhaps the licensee could have a DJ night on special application. At another meeting, Mr. St. Ange came in, and this is what you're referring to, and he talked about DJs and the, and the types of DJing and what it was right. and how some of it was original. However, after a long discussion, and it was, it was fairly cordial as I recall, um, we said, you know, it, a, a DJ, we were pretty clear this is what the, uh, uh, the department recommended, and we agreed to, uh, to get DJs and we liked it the way it was, essentially. But we did say that Mr. Sinange at that meeting, the minutes will show this, if you want to have a DJ night, ask for a special photo. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. That, 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 the, the minutes are, oh, thank you. The minutes are, are um, reflective of that. All right, if that concludes the department's uh, statement, then um, I would ask the licensee to respond, uh, Ms. Fernald. So they know um, who's working on the other side of the place. Right. Who's working that night on both sides. Right. Okay. So this is the one that uh, this is the one that you're saying would be kept on the uh, television. Uh, it is kept on the television yeah. side. And, okay. But it seems to show personnel From assigned to one side and assigned to the other side. Correct. Just one more charge. And again, because there's one more thing. Um, and with regard to the, um, the live entertainment, uh, your suspension was um, uh, uh, in, taken very seriously, and it was an expensive suspension. The um, attempt of Mr. Sanj to come in here shortly after that suspension with the deletion of the 
um, DJ from the entertainment license was an attempt to get clarification. And if you all recall, and I remember Commissioner Levin bringing it up, what, what, what does this necessarily mean? And there's conversation in the transcript from that hearing with people sort of saying, oh, we know what that means. It means on DJ. And then there's language of, oh, the classic type of DJ and the classic type of live music. Well, you may not all um, be familiar with this. I certainly wasn't, but there's hip-hop music that is um, sometimes consists of rap that is um, delivered at the same time people are um, improvising music electronically. And this is what was going on that night. And this is what Mr. St. Ange was asking you all about. And I read the minutes of the meeting, and my recollection is that you said this is a public safety issue. You need to take it up with the chief. Okay? So Mr. McColgan, because there were two events coming up, they canceled all the straight DJs where there were no questions whatsoever that it was a DJ. That was the only person who was going to be in the 11th. They canceled all of those immediately because these are booked in advance. These are paid performers. People have to pay at the door. So this is business. And they don't want to lose their license for another two days. So they canceled all of those. But he came in because there was this one performer for the question and didn't want to get violated for that. So after speaking with you and you're referring um, the licensee to the chief, um, he attempted to contact the chief and got no response. So then we had a discussion. Is this live? Is it going to be a performer? And the answer was yes. And but for the fact that we were called first, and I left my laptop at the office, my assistant's bringing it over with a YouTube video, and the picture speaks a thousand words of the performance that night. And it, it, again, if we talk about the classic sense of what a DJ is, I don't know what that really is anymore. But the one event that, that we were talking about coming back on for the Kelly O'Reilly side was often they get a wedding request. The UK to a wedding, they have a wedding here for Kelly O'Reilly. And they may want a DJ. That would be the, the one event they would come in on and ask for permission. And I'm assuming from you, not from the chief. Um, or some other special event. I think it's a jewelry event. This was entertainment that's been going on at the 11s for years. This type of entertainment without public safety issue. So they did attempt to talk to the chief. Uh, there was a determin determination made that there was a lot of entertainment. Um, and again, it's a case of testimony, but my understanding from staff is the police were in on the earlier shift. Um, no problem. Same. Same entertainment. It's the, the same officers came in about 11, had a discussion, looked around, nothing said, came back at, I believe, 110, and this is when Mr. St. I spoke with them, and uh, the questions were asked, and they said they saw the room in there on the stage. That was the same performer all night. I don't know if they stopped at, at 110. But um, it, it, it's on video, and I just don't have it yet. It will be here. Um, so that's what our, the, the licensee is here to tell you what he did after the, the violation hearing where he deleted the DJ license, um, the DJ permit. Uh, and staff is here to work that night. People are here who actually went that night and watched the show. This is, I mean, there was somebody on stage live. It may not be, you know, again, um, what different uh, individuals' perceptions is of what live entertainment is. And that's confusing. And I don't think it can be held against the license holder. I don't think you want to do that. If there's any confusion whatsoever about what that is, this is trying to commit behind the fact this is what we do. And it's been going on for years without it without a problem on the election side. This wasn't what led to the problems that even the chief has acknowledged were remedied when the DJ, who was a traditional DJ who stood in front of 
behind a booth in front of the dance floor, played records, recorded music, and people danced to it. That's what went on the Tally O'Reilly side. And we thought that was pretty clear what the Biden Commission was saying. If you wanted to hear from witnesses, I would be happy to present them. And as I say, the video is on its way. And I apologize, I thought we were on the Sorry, we had to move the group up, but I'm glad you showed up. Uh, uh, any questions for Jennifer? Well, <clears throat> I don't actually think our ultimate decision necessarily is going to hinge on some super technical professional examination of what is and what isn't a DJ, but um, I'm just curious, given that the position seems to be that this wasn't a DJ. How do you explain the fact that apparently this performer refers to himself as a DJ and it actually says in the, uh, where is that in the description of him that he is the originator, let me just see what, what the exact statement is. Um, Oh, here, Soul Slinger. This is who we're talking about, am I correct? Uh, <clears throat> after moving to New York permanently in the early 90s, he introduced jungle DJing stateside. I mean, apparently he thinks of himself as a DJ, no? I, I, I think that's what he said. I think that's what the word said that he introduced. But I could call myself a DJ. Isn't the concern here? whether or not there was live music or entertainment, which is allowed by it. I think the concern is whether this <coughs> crossed the line of a prohibited DJ. And certainly relevant to that is how the performer himself calls himself, which I didn't witness, but I hear that he calls himself a DJ. But I can see right here in writing that I'm sure he didn't object to being described as someone who introduced the jungle DJ. So I don't understand how you can square that with uh, the position that he's not a DJ. Oh my God. Um, I guess it depends on how that term has evolved and that's what's so difficult about defending it. Um, I have Wikipedia explanations as the chief had attached to the um, complaint that basically talks about the evolution of the term and what it's turned into and how an MC, a DJ, has become an MC. And then along with your MC, you have a rapper. Um, and there are people who aren't there dancing. They're there to be entertained. And they're there getting entertained with improvisational music, whether it's electronically produced, like you might have a an electric piano, or electronically mixed in front of them. With well, look, I'm, <laughs> I'm about as far as you could get from an expert on all the intricacies of what is and isn't a DJ, although I will say that one of my three daughters conveniently had a boyfriend for a period of time, no longer, who uh, called himself a DJ, so I witnessed what he did, which was not initially what I thought of as you know, DJing. It wasn't just feeding records into a, well, records, people don't even know what that means anymore. But um, anyway, my point is, uh, when Mr. St. Ange came in, the very fact that he came in suggests to me that he knew this was at least skirting the line. Otherwise, why would he have bothered to come in and discuss it with us? And we were very clear. I mean, you yourself said it, so I was glad that your memory was the same as mine. That we were not saying, no, this is not a DJ, nor were we really saying, yes, technically, if you, you know, pursue all the intricacies of modern music, it is a DJ. We were just saying, look, you know what it says. If you are here discussing this, because it obviously skirts the line, you better at least check it out with the police. Uh, that didn't happen. 
Do you see what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're not debating here, you know, what a group of musicians and music critics would be debating. We're, we're debating it at a much sort of more basic level, which is just, it's an old DJ. We didn't put in an elaborate definition. There was obviously an awareness that this was at least on the edge. And, you know, I just don't see how that really squares with saying, no, this wasn't a DJ. Well, I, I guess what came out of that, what I read out of the minutes of that meeting was this is a public safety issue. And that's why it needs to go to the police. Um, and so, uh, again, the, there wasn't an issue of public safety that I'm aware of that night. Um, and it, does, the, does the confusion about what that definition is then that always rests against the, you know, the licensee. If there's confusion, can't we try to clear it up as opposed to um, blame? Well, I hear what you're saying, but I, I also know if my mother said to me, you know, I don't want you baking anything in the kitchen, <coughs> that wasn't the time to say to her, well, this isn't really baking, this is really, you know, uh, broiling or what, you know, you just, you don't, you don't try to get as close as you can, to, but I, I don't need to argue with this with you. I understand what you're saying. But that's what I think the impression has been left. It's like somehow the, the licensee is trying to escape uh, and... <laughs> There was a rapper on the stage, and there was music. Can I uh, go for it? I'm sure Cohen has Yeah, I, I don't have anything more to add. I'm going to take off, so I just want to put my two cents in. Um, I guess we could split hairs on this a hundred different ways. And if we rule on what's in black and white on the paper, um, I can see how that would probably go. What I think we need to realize in the four and a half hours of due diligence I did, um, you know, I'm not going to quote lines and things like this, but I, I know in certain sections of it, you know, Tully put a pool table where the hip-hop DJ was that was attracting all the dangerous, okay, we'll just leave it at that. Um, as far as the 2 a.m. closings in the logbook, I read around line, I think it was page 65 on the, on the September 4th, that uh, Chief, maybe it was line 40, Chief Hugh actually stated that there were many nights they were closed before 1 a.m. and never even, and not even making it till 1.30 on certain nights. So to me, that's a moot point. Again, my opinions, my feelings versus what's black and white. As far as what goes on, um, you know, whatever we decide or you decide on, on deeming this as a DJ, it's my opinion that we uphold the last two days of suspension, and you know that that stays in suspension. You know, and this is how I would, if I could stay. So, in other words, the two days that are they're um, um, put off for suspension. You know, that we gave them a seven day, and we, we right. displaced two. Um, because St. Ange did try to come in here for some clarification. Now, whether or not you have a call log and whether or not somebody did try to call the chief and, and there was nothing there, and so they went ahead and did it. I mean, I don't know. I can't prove that. I can't disprove that. But it would be my opinion, the two days, uh, suspended days, stay suspended, totally be duly warned um, that even with this guy, if he wants to have him back ever again, and the only reason I'm saying this is because the officers didn't shut them down right away. They left and said, hey, yeah, finish the night. Okay, that's good. So I don't know if that's the right decision. I wasn't there. I don't know if it was the wrong decision. I'm just telling you what my opinions are. Um, so, but I would certainly say that no matter what, if, if, if guys aren't moving in drums, piano, and, uh, you know, or keyboard and things like that, you know, live music, then you need to come before us and, and ask for a permit. And that's that. So to me, it stays the way it is. And it's, you know, clarification finally, you know, on this 
other gentlemen. So that's just my opinion. But um, with that, I've got to go. So, uh, um, um, you have um, anybody else that you want to um, to bring up right now to uh, to discuss this in, in more detail? Anybody um, who's there or uh, have a license to do interesting art or, or the artist in question? Anybody really to give you that opportunity if you if you choose to take it? I'd like to speak. Um, I also have the. The video of the entertainment. Um, it's here. I'm hearing you don't want to see it. Uh, well, I didn't say that. I mean, no, I, I, I mean, I defend commission alone. Oh. And again, oh, no, I, I didn't say I didn't want to see it. I just, <coughs> I just said I don't think, you know, we're equipped in the way that, that music scholars would be to discourse a little bit of detail for what is in the future. I'm just concerned then that. If the licensee is being expected to know that um, and help to that standard. Well, we had an opportunity to discuss not with the licensee, but with the, the, the you know, person, Mr. St. Andrew, who really runs the, the booking, the entertainment side on, on, that, mm -hmm. on, that, on that, um, in that room of the, of the premises. Um, and I thought we had talk to him at some length about some of the points you're raising now and what is and what isn't. But it really came down to us, if, it, if in doubt, just come and ask for a permit. And that, that, was, that was pretty clear. It was, yeah, check with the chief, but ultimately it's for us, as this has come back now to us as you see, mm -hmm. for us to say you are, you're complying with your permit or you're not. And if there was any question there, we ended that, well, I don't know if we ended it, but we made it pretty clear during the explanatory session with Mr. St. Ange, if you're in doubt, you can come back for a permit, and you didn't. And the, the department now has brought us uh, this complaint, um, and it looks, you know, that there, you know, it's it certainly uh, see, seems to be that this artist is referred to as a DJ, that it was advertised using the word DJ, and that when you got down to the actual performance, which is on the video, which you would like to show us, you know, well, I, I don't know if I can, if that would, if that would be clear, but the, the officers came in, they thought it was a DJ, it's advertised as a DJ. We told Mr. Sinan, no DJs unless we have a special permit, and we understand what you're trying to say about new forms of DJing and mixing and all that. Nevertheless, we said, do that. And that's, that's, that's what happened at that meeting. Uh, we thought we made that clear. Well, that at least I, was clear. I, I read the minutes. I misunderstood. I did not see you had to come back and get a special permit. I thought that's what he was in here for. And then the record No, he the had point. no date. He didn't give us a date that, that he wanted to do an event. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want an event that's a DJ event, mm -hmm. you know, we had gone over this in the original violation hearing. Um, uh, you know, the, the chief uh, himself brought this up. If they want to do this, they can get a special permit. We reiterated that at the second meeting of clarification discussion with Mr. St. Ange and thought, uh, yeah, now it's clear. Um, and that's that's what it was. And that's why we're here today is because he didn't come back for a special event permit. He didn't ask us for one of that clarification, correct? Correct. Um, so we are you know, we, we're now dealing with a complaint because it's an apparent violation of the, of the entertainment license. So that's, that's, that's why we're here. Okay, so what not, I've not, not what a DJ you know, does and all that. Um, okay, well, a DJ is what was prohibited. Yes. Okay, so if someone is not a DJ, whether they're referred to it as a former name in a flyer, it's not advertising, this is DJ Mac. Uh, it doesn't advertise that. It advertises that he was once referred to as, and has been referred to as. Um, I hear what the officer, um, in the red, what the officer said, he referred to himself as. Um, but if there's a performer and you hear that there was a performer on stage doing rap, um, 
and the police officer says there was no performer, no live performer on stage, then I guess you're looking at who you believe. And if that's the case, I, I need to put that witnesses who are actually there watching the event uh, or the event itself. Feel free. Nationally, in our country, people are awarded on award shows for it. So I'm just 
I want to infer that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just identify yourself for the record, please. Um, Robert Robinson, <coughs> I was a bartender that night. Um, and I remember when the police first showed up, um, they're probably. There was talks about the night being shut down, and I remember maybe like 15 fans outside talking with uh, one of the officers, explaining to that officer, this is not a DJ. Um, I think, and I remember the, the officer coming back, and I spoke to him, and he said, about 15 people told me this is not a DJ. I don't see any problems here. This seems pretty safe. Um, as long as there's no problems, I'll, we'll let this happen. And I remember shaking his hand, and then they left. Um, and as in a future reference, um, I think it's very important that there needs to be a clarification of what a DJ is and what is not. This is not baking, this is running a business. You know what I mean? Like, when you, when you made the analogy of like, a, like baking, it's like, okay, well, this is a business. This needs to be clarified. Um, and we're one of the only local live venues in town. If an artist comes to town and someone wants to see this person and he has to have the name DJ, which is really just a moniker these days, I can call myself DJ Robert, and I don't know anything about DJing, but people just do it to be whatever cool in the music industry. It's a moniker. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and as far as when he said he looked up information on a flyer, I believe the cops took a flyer for a, a show that wasn't even at the Olympics. No, they did. What? Are, are they you took saying this the, flyer? They, no, they took the right one. Have... Okay. All right. Well, I thought that was at the waterfront for two minutes. No, 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 they had the right one. Um, so, just in future reference, I really think there needs to be a definition of what DJ is or what it isn't, because it really affects my livelihood as a bartender. It affects Polly as somebody trying to pro you know, provide uh, entertainment for this town. Um, and this, this whole gray area is going to continue to come up. And, there, and, uh, and in, if you want my honest opinion, I think it's the top 40 DJs that are causing the problems in this town, and they'll move to another club. And that's going to cause problems. It's not the kind of DJs that we have at the 11th. We never have problems there. If John Cena came to me and said, we're going to have a top 40 11th DJ at the 11th, I'd probably say, I don't want to work that night. Because <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. You know? that's, that's my two cents. Wait, I, I just have a question. Sure. I, I, I want to be clear about this. Are you saying that this flyer does not pertain to the performer that was performing that night? I, I just remember there was a couple flyers because they fly all over the 11s, and I remember seeing uh, when when there's shows, people bring flyers and they fly all over the 11s. Yeah, I understand that. So I don't I know if that is. that is Robert. Okay. I, if you can't see that. Okay. Part. Do you want me to bring it up? I'd be trusting that. Mom. No, she. If you want to see it, right. she'll bring it. To well, this is important. I would like to know. I would like to know if this. Oops, sorry. If this flyer here refers to the person that was. Mr. Yeah, that's that's like I'd love to talk about that flyer if I could. Mr. Yes. Oh, sure, sure. Is that all right? Attorney Fernald, is that all right with you? Yes. Okay. Mr. Sanon, I'm going to ask you to clarify this with Well, I think that's what you said. Yeah. Well, I think that's what you said. Okay. So everybody knows that we're not denying that. Okay. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Okay. After interviewing the artists themselves in detail, how they were going to do their line of foundation, so I prepared this. And who this is a lot of people for this event. So just to try to clarify the Uh, one more thing before I do that uh, I, I did 
go to school and have a bachelor's degree in media arts. I don't know if that makes any sense, if that helps or not, but I know a lot about this music and I'm very passionate about music. And for me to work there, if I also sometimes bring shows and artists that I like to the club, if I can't bring somebody there because I'm worried if, if you guys or the cops are going to consider that DJs or not, I just don't think that's very fair. I, I think it's going to benefit the community to have culture and art coming into this place that's safe. And it's always safe. It's not safe. I don't want to work there. I don't want that for, for our community. Um, and this was not, this was live music that night, uh, in my opinion. And thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to call Mr. McColgan, the licensee. Okay, uh, Mr. McColgan. Mm -hmm. right. um, I think, uh, I think I started to go off track on some of this, about the mm -hmm. teaching, how to DJ. Um, we left the hearing in September. I had already canceled the DJs on the public <coughs> months before that. We were going in a different direction anyway. Um, we just wanted to do just five big hands a few times. Um, we had a two events monthly on the other side that were DJs. You know, flat out, it was different. You know, one was the 80s, another one was the 70s. You know, they had different different types of um, um, music that they were playing. Um, we canceled those. Anything that I would even have thought about somebody saying, you know, that could be a DJ. You know, because sometimes these guys, um, these performers will come in, <coughs> their, their laptops, and their, their turntables, and they'll they mix their own music, and it's you know, considered live music, but there's nobody singing, there's nothing else going on. So we stopped those times. Because, you know, to me, I'd say, you know, that, that's questionable. But in a night question, there was somebody up there singing with a microphone all night. Now, to me, that's live music. It's 2013, laptops are everywhere and they're considered musical instruments now. I have to pay, um, I have to pay BMI, ASCAP, all these music, these copyright companies in order to have people play, DJs. I have consulted with them. No, original music is not a DJ. It's considered live original music. So, you know, I take this the punishment I got very seriously, and anything I would say is in question, I would say, no, we're not allowed. You know, you can talk to Mr. St. Ange, told him anything, you know, we went over everything, every single event coming up, performance, as long well. as somebody has to be up there, make sure the microphone, some kind of instrument, something, and that was going on that night. You know, so he said, I know I'm under a microscope, and I would not risk anything. You know, this is very serious. We employ a lot of people, and I don't want to risk my family, my employee, or anybody. So I, I think we're, you know, we're kind of starting to split hairs. Um, we came in to try to get more of a clarification on some of these other nights where there are people sitting, a microphone, or whatever. That didn't happen. Well, Mr. St. Ange came in. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Mr. St. Ange came in for clarification. I recall that you, you came that day, but you were late. Well, no, yeah. I was I, I, coming on. And I'm sorry you weren't there. No, no, it would, have been, it would have been great. It would have been great if you were there and, and all that. Yeah. I'm sorry that, that you missed that part. But we do have the minutes of our discussion with Mr. St. Ange that day. Well, that's, I understand so, that. And that's, so, you know, I, thought, you know, I, thought, I thought it was. That wasn't about, that wasn't about this night. It wasn't trying to save this night. That wasn't about. No, no, it wasn't. True. You know, he wasn't saying, well, you know, this is great. This is other stuff. And my intention for coming was to, to talk. I thought the chief was going to be here and talk about, you know, we do a lot of private parties, Christmas parties. You know, we did Eastside Grill last year. They wanted to DJ. How do we handle that? You know, Christmas parties, private parties. I mean, there's, there's a lot of variables, and that's what I want to talk about. And that, you know, that never came to fruition. So you know, there's a lot of back and forth, and there's a lot of gray area, and I think there's way too much gray area. You know, it's 2013, computers are everywhere. And they're considered usable instruments. So I don't, I don't know how else to explain it to you. Or, you know, when you think you go on this or this, you know, I don't know. But it was no, there's no intention of trying to say, well, you know, this was questionable. In my mind, it was not questionable. There was somebody up there all night with a microphone. To me, that, that's a live performance.
Thank you, Mr. Um Attorney Earl, do you have anybody else that you want to? I don't have any other witnesses. I do have the video. I'm just trying to call it up. Um, uh, I'd ask the department now to respond uh, to uh, some of the uh, statements and uh, been made by the licensee. <coughs> just to close, I mean, this this is not a noble thing. We're acting on the best definitions that we can operate on, on the guidance that have been approached by the license commission. Early in September, is no discharge. The definition of discharge is the use of work on your license, whether or not hard phones or not. That's what it is. Um, in my mind, Mr. St. Ives came to the age asking permission for this job to take music and he set up a process that they could ask for that. And that didn't happen. So based on our observations, based on the definitions we work with, based on the license connection, he gave us guidance on it. And further, referring to their entertainment license, I mean, this jockey was removed. Uh, it refers to jukebox, television, Modification 99 include live jazz bands, swing bands, and some rock bands, but not of a heavy nature, whatever that means. But clearly, live music is differentiated between this electronic. If the License Commission gives us guidance to change that and refine it, then we will act on that definition. But given what we had in front of us, what the officers had in front of us, the, time, the definitions that you gave us and the definitions that come with an aggregate, that's what we act on for consideration. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, uh, I just have one clarification about the license. It does say taped and recorded music. I mean, again, we're getting into semantics. Um, and I have the video of what went on that, and I just want to see. Okay, Sam. We're just going to see what the clip <laughs> Can I just get a video of this? What you're about to show us is a video of the state but it's not. Oh, it's just that. Yeah. Of this 
obligation to the law book. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now the um, the other uh, matter of the um, violation of our prohibition of disc jockeys uh, under the terms of this entertainment license. Um, uh, what what is your there's well, a violation yeah. here. We had a, a suspended violation. Uh, Commissioner Campadelli addressed that before he left. Um, if you want to just uh, take it from there, based on that and subsequent testimony. I, 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 I will say um, first, just because, I, you know, he is a here and I think it's important to, you know, uh, acknowledge everyone's position. I mean, as I understood what uh, Commissioner Compton was saying, he was saying, look, there are some gray areas, and now we have greater clarification, and therefore, I think, the two days that were suspended should remain suspended and, you know, just leave this as a kind of, I don't, you know, additional follow-up clarification or something along those lines. He, he didn't seem to feel it was uh, a violation. That's my understanding. My own opinion is this. I, I do, I mean, despite the fact that I said uh, I, I really don't know anything about this kind of music. I, I, I was being unfair to myself because I actually did. Um, and I, I, because we did have uh, someone who was connected, you know, via relationship with one of my children who does this kind of music. And I do understand the difference between a DJ who just plays for a party or, you know, put whatever they use nowadays. I don't even think they use CDs anymore, they probably just do it all in front of um, I understand the difference between that and someone who's making original music using some of the same uh, modalities, you know, computers and uh, whatever it is. I, I do understand that difference. Um, and under general circumstances, I would say maybe that kind of music is really great music to offer in Northampton. But this is not a general circumstance. This is a situation where just, you know, a short time previously, we had issued a sanction. I mean, another thing that I, that I want to just mention is Maybe it's unfortunate that for whatever reasons, historical reasons that I'm not that familiar with, there's one license for two, you know, establishments that were operating in a fairly different fashion. But that's the way it was, okay? There's only one license. Under that license, there were disturbances that had been happening you know, with some frequency to finally a point where they really, you know, went over the line. We found a violation. We came up with a, you know, hopefully a solution or a, something that would help with that problem by saying no DJs. Uh, you know, we could have just closed the place down. We could have just said no more 2 a.m. closing. We tried to find something that would accommodate the legitimate needs of the businesses and of those patrons who enjoy those businesses while at the same time maintaining, you know, the kind of public safety and order that we need. And we came up with this idea of no DJ. This came too close, whether you can parse it in various ways or not. This came too close to being a DJ. We were very clear when Mr. St. Ange was here that we were not saying, no, this is not a DJ. And I just think it was, I don't know, not very thoughtful on the part of, you know, the establishment to, to run this risk. And, uh, I, I really feel, you know, maybe there'll be future discussions to allow the kind of music that isn't really a DJ, it's more like 
whatever, you know, original. I mean, maybe we can continue to have those discussions involving ourselves on the commission, the police department, and the establishment, the two establishments um, that operate under one license. But as of today, I, I would have to say this is a violation and two suspended days have to be served. So that's my opinion. And I can make a motion to that effect in which you have different things that you know, I'd like to. Uh, no, I'll. I'll second your motion but before we vote let me just say um uh, i also understand that you know there's some question this is original music yes this this artist who was there that night and um i really understood what uh the uh, bartender i'm sorry robert robert um was saying about this and i also understand that Mr. McColgan's business is important to this community, it's important to his family, it's important to his employees, it's important to, to, to the artists who come and do this thing. And I have no doubt that the fellow who was there this night in question was an artist and he was, he was uh, putting on a performance that people liked and it was great. And there was no uh, danger to public safety that evening uh, because the, the police did show up and they didn't see any, any beefs going on, any disorder, and they left. So that's not in question. The, the, the matter here is we were pretty clear at the original violation hearing. The, the source of a lot of the disturbances seemed to be DJ night. So we said, no DJs, we're bending your entertainment license, no DJs. And, um, we didn't say this is for all time. I mean, if, if things, you know, settle down, you know, other things change, perhaps, you know, the entertainment license could be restored to the way it was before uh, with greater controls and uh, greater concern for the public safety. So we didn't say that. We also said at the same time, you could still have a DJ in this license premise if you come in for a special permit. And then um, Mr. St. Ange came in after that violation hearing and again, I'll, I said this already, but I think we clarified it here. You know, no, I, we understand what you're saying, and he brought up the same points about laptops and sampling and all that. And, and uh, I want to acknowledge um, uh, what the other one said about you know, how these things are. And, and sure, he explained that, but we said at the time, if, it, if, it's, if it's not a ban, as we commonly think, if it's, if it's something like a DJ, that looks like a DJ or calls itself a DJ, even if it's doing these hybrid things, um, come to us for a permit. Really, that's that's what I thought we made clear that day. And yet, the police showed up. They they determined this a DJ. They looked at at um, uh, flyers or written evidence said, "Here's a DJ." They bring this complaint to us. We have no choice here but to find a violation because this was made pretty clear. The, the, the police came to us and said, this is it. I think on the face of it, this is a violation. This was, for our purposes, a DJ. Again, we don't want to do anything to put Mr. McColgan's business in, in jeopardy. Uh, we understand there's changes that have been made there, but it's... You know, this was this was made pretty clear, and yet we have uh, another complaint coming from the police department. So uh, I believe we have to find a, a violation here. So um, that said, we have a uh, a motion and a second uh, on whether or not a violation occurred uh, in terms of the entertainment license in this case. Um, I'll ask. Uh, for a vote, all in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. All right, having found a violation, we should talk about the sanction. Um, and at this point, I, ask the, I would ask the chief to, um, to give his thoughts on the sanction, as we often do with these hearings. Is there anything further on sanction you would recommend, having found a violation that you brought to us? I would refer to your own ruling in the September 4th hearing if another violation occurred before September 4th of 2014, that the two days would be implemented. That was your own decision. So that would, and I make a recommendation one or the other, I'm just reflecting back on what you decided. Right, I'm just day. giving you a chance. 
Mr. Rosen, may I speak to that? Just yes, briefly? yes. Um, I think one of the things I did not hear in any of your discussions is the fact that there are other performers. You keep referring to a DJ. Yeah. There were other performers there, singing, rapping. Um, and so you keep calling it just a DJ. And I, I understand okay. that you've made your ruling, but I heard no discussion about the fact that this was a performance, not just a DJ. And so someone was up there working with electronic equipment, but there was someone up there performing. And I understand. It's a fair point, but we, we had... Um you know, we had gone through some of this matter uh, in that in that uh, subsequent meeting where, where we discussed it with Mr. Sinov, and we thought, you know, this appears to us as a um, uh, as something went against what we thought was was the um, agreed upon not definition, but sort of the agreed upon terms of the entertainment license. We found that now, so it, it, the matter is, is settled for us now. As Commissioner Levin said, you know, and as I said, you know, if you know, if this is if this establishment is um, is seen to be posing no threat to the public safety, which led to the original violation hearing and all the all the problems there before, we can go back and do this later. But for right now. This night that resulted in this complaint looks to us to violate the terms of the entertainment license, and that, that is how we have moved. All right, um, we've heard the chief, and we do have, we did say at the original hearing, five days, seven days, with two days suspended, barring no further violations. We do have a violation. Um, uh, I think you said earlier that they should serve the two days, and I would agree. So, um, the well, we um, added the separate motion or in addition to the original motion. Um, sure. Well, I'll just make a motion in, in light of the fact that a violation has occurred, <clears throat> that the uh, two days that were suspended um, based upon no further violations now should be served. Okay, second. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Um, you'll have to serve the two-day um, suspension that was suspended at the original hearing in September. Uh, you may choose the days. So, um, okay, that concludes this hearing. Thank you for coming. Thank you, officers, for showing up. Uh, okay, we'll get back to the um, agenda. Uh, approval, uh, report of liquor license inspection of building inspection of fire safety.
sprinkler testing, and uh, it seems that they've been having trouble getting the paperwork from their inspection company. Mm -hmm. But so, as far as you know, there's nothing serious like the sprinkler system that doesn't work, right? No, the, the most serious thing is we, we have found one establishment that hadn't had their hood cleaned yet. But that would be the most significant. Uh, I the hood cleaning has always come up in these things. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to put all the pieces together, yeah. I think, sometimes, because I think the inspections throughout the Commonwealth happen about this time of year, and if you postpone your hood cleaning, it's hard to get somebody to come and do it right now. All right. Um, anything else, Mr. Hasbrook? I think that's it for the license okay. inspections. All right. Thank that's you. And thanks, Lieutenant Terry. Is there work to on this, or is it captain now? Say again. Is oh, Captain, we, we, so he, we work together. We have we split the task. Yeah. Is he? No, my question is, is he Captain now or Lieutenant? Captain. He's Captain. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then the other piece was uh, Mr. Sewer's uh, two premises um, and their building permits. Yes. Yes. Um, all right. So we'll skip over uh, item six and and um, move to that. Uh, update from Eric Sewer regarding license, and first we'll hear then from you, Mr. Um, um Mr. Sewers, both of the buildings have, have had permits issued. The permits have been issued for them. Um, the building at 28 Center Street, the work is well underway, and I expect that we can uh, work at 298 Main Street is more extensive. We re we've received the whole set of plans. We've approved the plans, and I expect the work to get underway um, within two weeks. So I'm satisfied that the progress is going forward. Great. That's good to hear. That's very good. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Okay. Um, Mr. Sewer, we move to your item here. We heard you heard most of what Mr. Hasbrook said, that you have uh, uh, permits in place now, and, and he's satisfied with the scope of the work or the work that's planned to be done. Do you have anything you want to say at this time? Uh, nope. I you know, appreciate uh, the commission's granting us the time. Uh, both permits have been filed. The uh, work actually commenced at 26 Center Street almost immediately following the last meeting. Um, the information was into the building department. It was just a formality in terms of him issuing the actual permit, but the plans had been approved and that work's commenced and, and they're moving along nicely. In mean, the January 5th deadline, we're hopeful we're going to meet that. There's the holidays in between, but I think the intent is obviously there. If I see that there's a need for some time, I'll let you know. But, I mean, the goal is to be completely finished. And as Louis had said, the 298 Main Street, all of the work is lined up. It's just a question of getting. Now we have the physical permit so that the work is being scheduled for the people to come in there. Okay, that's acceptable yeah, thank to you. me. Uh, uh, yeah, no, sounds good. And thank you. Okay. Thanks for that update. Then... Um, so as part of number seven, I ask please that you uh, make a motion to approve the renewal of license for, uh, for West Street Corporation. For West Street, that's 298. Okay, so that's the church. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, approve the renewal of the license for uh, for West Street Corporation at 298 Main Street. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, and I'll continue to give you the updates as requested. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Seward. Okay, we're jumping all around <clears> here. <throat> Item number six, approval, disapproval, renewal of annual liquor licenses for ABCC instruction. I gave you a large packet. These are all the licenses that I asked you to approve renewal. They've all met all the conditions of liquor liability insurance payment and being inspected mm -hmm. by the building inspector. That's the part of the clip. Okay. You could just make a... Okay. And these don't list. include the 23 that are Those on. don't include these other special parts. Okay. If they don't include, do they include the 23 that are pending on Mr. Hesburgh's? Some of them, yes. So they're in process of inspection, but all the okay. other uh, conditions they are. Okay. Okay, so okay. In, in voting to approve the... That would obviously be contingent when they're satisfying Correct. Mr. Hassel, whatever it right. means. There's no outstanding taxes, we didn't make payment, we provided with the liability insurance, and we didn't make payment. I'll make a motion that we would call the weapon and the burial, and we'll say that's why we're going to make payment. Okay. 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 Okay.
Item A is I uh, ask you to allow the renewal of license 56, which is Camille Casual doing business at 7-Eleven. As she has, you will see item 8 here down below. She has a buyer that has, um, we have placed the legal ad and we have all of their documentation here to uh, uh, apply for a transfer of license and change of location. Okay, so we'll be hearing from the new applicant. New license, the potential licensee. Sure. Okay. So uh, I'll make a motion. That Wait, we... I'm sorry. I'm just. I just want to be clear. Item number eight is asking us to approve the transfer. We have to renew it first. We have to first renew the license. Okay. Oh, we have to, to renew it, it. And, and, then, the and then we'll hear from the new licensee. Yeah. It's just, it's just a gender. We've gone back and forth. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the renewal of the license. Um, <coughs> uh, Kimberly Kasnin, DBA 7-Eleven. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Yeah. The next item, item B, I'm asking you to allow the renewal of license 105, which is Spoleto Express. It's actually already at the ABCC as a transfer of application to King Street East. However, the four Spoleto licenses are actually, their checks are being held right now by the tax collector because the licensee has not come in and signed an agreement with the tax collector regarding outstanding taxes. So what I'm asking you to do is approve the renewal, allow us to take their checks pending a written agreement with the tax collector. Who hasn't paid the taxes? The previous the licensee, licensee of these licenses for Spoleto, Spoleto Express, Pizzeria Paradiso, and Mama Iguanas. Okay, okay, but this establishment, uh, King's the King Street East, East license, the, the 105, which was Spoleto Express, still belongs to Mr. Guerra, but has not yet been transferred. Okay. It has to be the licensee who signs right. the renewal in order. So this to has nothing to do with Mr. Right. McColgan's no. license no. at King Street. Okay. No, but in order for these to go forward, um, I'm asking that you allow the renewal and the acceptance of payment of the licenses. However, the licenses will not be given to the licensee until an agreement is made <coughs> with the tax collector regarding outstanding tax. Okay, before we. Move on this. I'd like to know. Maybe you have a question too. What is Mr. Guerra going to do with that license that formerly was Spoleto Express there on King Street? Continue the transfer of application. Getting into King Street, right? Giving it to King Street. It's actually already at the ABC. Oh. Okay. So I'm confused. I, I really, I, I'm just confused because if we already approved the transfer, why can't it be? In the name of King Street, it's not been right transferred yet. It's still at the ABCC. So they're oh, until the end of the current Oh, okay. yes. All right. So. Okay. If we renew this license, Mr. McCall will be able to continue to serve there. He hasn't yet got the transfer. Served. He hasn't been able to serve. The transfer has not yet happened. It's still at ABCC. Okay. Is there anything we can do to speed this up? It's uh, actually on the present licensees end with the ORA. Can we prod the licensee to do what he needs to do in order to speed this up? Uh, well, presumably it's in his interest to do it, right? Yes, because the transaction won't go through if that is a clear up. Ms. Fernald. I, I'm just, I, I was here, I stayed because I wanted to hear. Um, we're waiting for the transfer to go through and it's not going to go through until past the way. Is there anything we can do? Uh, I mean, to make it happen soon. It's, it's really probably the not. Department of Revenue. Probably not. It's really the Department of Revenue. But thank you. All right. Okay, then I will make a motion to allow the <coughs> of Fund Dining DBS Flood Express, which is so pending at the ADCC. Can I hear a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item C is um, Side Street Cafe. As of November 24th, the licensee has told me that the potential sale has fallen through and he did not want to renew the license. It was one of the many licenses that converged from seasonal to 
annual associate license fee that they will resolve by non renewal. Okay. I need you to, so he um, can vote, he's withdrawing his yes. request. So I need to ask you to vote to disapprove re renewal based on the licensee's request. Uh, this Bodacious Cowboy is dining with the Nice to I will make a motion to uh, not to renew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor, aye. Okay, on item D, I ask you to allow the renewal of the license 125 for Eclipse. They have actually two possible potential buyers in the works. Neither has yet come to me, but um, possibly by January we'll have an application. <coughs> I'll make a motion that we. <coughs> Approve the renewal of that license. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. And one not on here is I ask you to disapprove renewal of the Grub Sandwich license, which is number 134, which is for Olive Juice Company doing business as Grub Sandwich Shop at 88 Pleasant Street. The licensee has not renewed as her business has closed. Is that a seasonal? One? It was a uh, seasonal that she converted last year to annual. Mm -hmm. So that also will dissolve. Okay, so um, I'll make a motion that we not renew the license uh, for the establishment formerly known as Grub. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda it follows the uh, renewal of the license um, earlier renewed. Uh, application for transfer of license and change of location, JW Sandry Incorporated, DBA Sandry number 130 at 776 King Street. Uh, proposed manager, Jeffrey uh, uh, Cox, Cox. Kosis. Sorry? Kosis. Uh, sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, would you all come forward <laughs> and uh, tell us about this, um, uh, this business? Good evening. My name is John Mason. I'm an attorney from Greenfield and I represent the Sandy Companies. Uh, attorney Pearson is here who represents Kimberly Tasneen. She's currently a holder of a license that she uses at the 7-Eleven store at King Street and she's seeking to transfer that to David W. Sandy Inc. We have an application for you. It's a beer and wine package license. Um, to serve off premises. We're looking to move that license from the current location to the proposed location, uh, which is being renovated. And we're looking to have you approve this and have Mr. Kosas approved as the manager. So I'm just curious, is the location you're talking about at 776 North King Street currently? It's occupied a, by Sunoco? No, it's, it is a Sunoco gas station. The one that's being torn up uh, right now. Sir, um, forgive me, but I were hearing it. Okay, that's right. right. The one that's being torn up right now. Correct. It's being torn up. It's being totally renovated. There's a new septic system, going, and there's a new underground petroleum uh, storage system and disbursement system with new pumps and a new uh, canopy, as well as rehabbing the, the, the top and the building itself is going to undergo cosmetic renovations. And your client bought the whole business? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Your client bought the whole business from the uh, current owners of that gas no, station? No, my client, uh, uh, it's an, it's, they're <coughs> interrelated companies. Okay. They're all stem from the same uh, okay. overall okay. entity. The, uh, the gas station is owned currently by JW Sandra Inc. Well, it's not by Sandra Realty. We sell to JW Sandra. Correct. Right. And those those fellows who run it now are, are not the owners. No, okay. they're not. Got it. No, just I was just curious. Was just, uh, no, they we they have, no they they don't they don't own the property at all. Okay. So Sandra is um, is looking for uh, this package store license to go in there once the correct the yes. uh, the whole thing is renovated and the tanks replaced and the reopening the business. Correct. correct. And you will be the manager? Will be, yes, sir. Okay. You manage other package stores now? Uh, I have a station in Lee, Massachusetts with a beer and wine license, and we will have, uh, we also own one in Orange, Massachusetts that is currently going under extensive renovation. That will be open probably early January. Mm -hmm. And the staff that you will hire for this package store location on King, North King Street is um, 
the current staff that's already there? No, sir. No, there'll be a new staff. Uh, we we'll take that over and we'll have a, you know, all qualified um, and go through rigorous training as far as the, uh, the, the policy and procedure that we require for a uh, peer wine license. Okay, serve safe for tips training. Correct, sure. yeah. And, you know, we card everywhere, so. I have no further questions. I assume you have that training as well. Was it with card? No. No, oh, the tips so are, yeah, one of those. Uh, I do not currently know, ma'am. Oh, so are you planning to I, get that? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'll well, make a motion that we... Sorry. I need the 16th thing. Uh, and also I have all the abide cards returned by the no. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> It's not within 15, 500 feet. What? Do we need, do we need something when it's there's, not? There's in? no, I, I, yeah. I wrote it with there are no. Uh, do we still need one? <laughs> still I thought need we only needed it when, when it was within. Yeah. I need to prove there is a. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> I'll make a motion <laughs> that the uh, proposed location <laughs> of this license is not within 500 feet of any church, school, synagogue, or hospital. And, and that uh, we would find, therefore, that there'll be no negative impact on the educational spiritual activities of any church, school, synagogue, or hospital city in North Hampton by the granting of the transfer license and change of location. I'm sorry. Okay. You hear that? Uh, so, do I hear a second? I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the transfer contingent on <coughs> Mr. Kosis completing his training. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Wait, oh, I don't need to Okay. Mr. Sierros, you've been very patient. <laughs> application for a new comment for the license. Helos Enterprises LLC DBA. Helos of Bottles, Helos Creek, Helos Creek Taverna at 279 Main Street. Mr. Sierra, what are you doing? I am, uh, I am, I am opening a, a Greek restaurant. Um, I'm looking for a location for it. Uh, I'm looking for a location for it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I, I, they're outside of the existing conditions of you know, being so close to a church, and, and my landlord is is the the Edwards Church. Hmm. And I've decided that at this stage, if if I may, uh, you know, reserve. But you can come at any time. Yeah, I, I, that's, I, that's 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 stuff to you. That's up to you. I feel that this is not uh, the, the the venue at this stage, and, and you know, given my my. Many years in the business, it's it's, uh, it's okay. And after what I heard tonight, I was talking to you again. Yeah, we're here. As long as the bottle of water is good, that's all. Right. Yes, ma'am. I have a I have a chef coming from Greece, uh, who's a family member, really? who is a pastry chef, in uh, in a few days to uh, make sure we do it right. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. I like it. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the application for the <coughs> common Vic license for Philos Greek Taverna. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, uh, when, when do you hope to? Hello, thank you. Oh. Uh, we're, we're waiting for the finals, uh, for the final CO, um, um, you know, the certificate of occupancy. And, uh, let me just so, say that, you know, on, on the record, I just want to tell you that the, the, uh, every office in, in, the, in the city has been just exceptional. I can't. Uh, this is, this is uh, you know, you hear, you know, Florence is kind of a different entity. Sometimes, you know, we're out in the, out there and we kind of work in a different kind of thing. But 
coming down to other things that you think, um, oh boy, you know, oh wow, you know, you're good. But my God, the, everybody's been just so decent. Yeah, and I just wanted to applaud that. Are you, are you going to serve uh, all day or dinner? Yeah, or what? Um, we're, we're doing um, uh, lunch and, and, um, and dinner, and uh, it seats about 40, 40 people, uh, 42. Um, they'll have delivery and, and pick up oh. and eat in. And it's, um, it's order at the counter, and then we'll bring the food out to you. You know, very similar to some what other people are doing in town. Mm -hmm. It's not wait service right. per se. Right. Um, so we're um, taking that approach and thinking that's more of a. The meals are, you know, uh, large. It's not a, you know, it's not a simple thing. You, right. you know, on the one hand. On the other hand, it's. Um, I also have old world uh, uh, pizza, which is not uh, typical of what you get mm. everywhere it's got. But it's not a pizza place with great food under any circumstances. I hear so, you. Um, I kind of held on to what I, what I, knew, what I know, so, you know, feeling a little well, secure. You know pizza, though. Yeah, I know, I know pizza. So that's <laughs> what I know. So. I would say you know pizza. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I need a copy of the deed and a copy of your worker's comp. I've given everything in the, uh, in the packet, in the, uh, in the um, form that I sent. I've, I've, I've given... Uh, I have the business certificate, I have the application, and I have the check, and so I have the actual... There was a folder with everything. I don't know why you don't have it. You should. You should have it. I'll, I'll get you another copy. That's why I didn't bring President it today. Board of Health? Maybe the board help us those? Yes, ma'am. I'll ask them. I'll they ask have them. the copy of the deed and the and the, and the okay. I'll get it from them. All right. Here oh, you go. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your help. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Great. What's your box of date? Um, I'd like to shoot for next Wednesday. Great. I mean, if. Wow. That's, so right. you, That's why I'm, you know, just. I made you a 2013. But we only charge you for 14 weeks, so close to Okay, all right. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, and I also thank you all for your patience. Application for short term wine and malt, wine and malt liquor license, Canada Music Theater, uh, Berkshire Bach, New Year's concert on, on New Year's Day, 25. There's actually a second that she submitted okay. after I had published the agenda. And you also, we will take these together. January 4th, 1825th, meet me at the movie series of three rock and roll concert films. Ooh. Also, they can a music, and you were requesting a. Um, um, <coughs> you're not supposed to do that in the You're not supposed to show excessive interest. We've got Aerosmith and uh, Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. Um, ma'am. Hi, I'm Allison Clayton, I'm the front of house and events manager for the Academy of Music. Um, these are our first uh, events of the year, um, and this is just traditional beer and wine um, concession service. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we <coughs> approve the application and I'll grant the fee waiver. I'll second that. All in favor, aye. Uh, Thank you <laughs> for hanging around. And then you have one item for your business from mm -hmm. the Smith College. Okay. Uh, the application for a short-term liquor license, uh, Smith College, Smith Dining Services, at um, uh, December 6th, that's two days from now, seeing wine and cheese. Hi, I'm Kathy Page, I'm Director of Dining Services, and um, We've been asked to cater this event, um, this event kind of for our senior class to have. It's um, from six to eight, we'll have wristbands, we'll be checking IDs, and um, it's at the museum atrium, so it's not a licensed facility, so we would like to just meet their wishes, their late wishes, to do this event for them. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the application <coughs> for the wine and cheese event. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Approval of minutes November 6th. I did look at those. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any other business? No. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you put this thing about January 8th because I'm such a, you know, I had written it in on the first, but just not even, you know, it's it's not, not, it's not, New Year's Day. Let's not do that. That's New Year's Day. All right. Then, um, what other business? I'll move you adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye.